Let's get more on the economic situation of the BRICS with Song Won Son, professor of economics at California's State University. Professor, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So the BRICS term was coined by Goldman Sachs chief economist Jim O'Neill, and Goldman last year quietly closed down its BRIC fund. Is this an indication that the era of the BRICS is over? Letters are dropping off. Really, the only letter that matters is to see China. The other nations uh, are not doing all that well, with the possible exception of uh, uh, India. So uh, BRICS said that it's not as popular as it uh, had been in the past. Does it even make any sense to have the group together, to have these countries grouped in that way? To your point, uh, Brazil is in a recession, Russia is in a recession, South Africa is on the tip of a recession. India still doing well and China readjusting. So does the grouping even make sense anymore? I don't really think so. Uh, individual countries have uh, so many economic problems and uh, uh, BRICS as a group uh, obviously can help, but it's not going to solve any problems. As uh, mentioned earlier, when you talk about the you know, five countries, uh, Brazil, they are experiencing the worst economic recession during the post-war period high inflation, and they've got political problems and impeached their president. Uh, Russia is suffering from uh, low oil prices and then sanctions from EU. Uh, India is a relatively doing better, primarily because uh, it is a heavily regulated country, and the new prime minister, Modi, uh, he has been dismantling, dismantling regulations. As a result, uh, they've been getting more domestic and foreign investments. But really, the key is China. If China does better, all the world including the U.S. and the rest of the BRIC nations will do better. So to me, the key is China, not so much BRICS. Well, you say the key is China, and the other BRICS minus China are very heavily dependent on China. So what's the impact on them as China's economy rebalances and is experiencing slower growth? It is a, a significant problem. Uh, for example, Brazil. Uh, Brazil is... Uh, a manufacturing country in addition, in addition to commodity exporting nations. Uh, as China's economic growth has slowed and China does not uh, manufacture as much, they have been cutting back imports from uh, Brazil, for example, iron ore. As a result, that's really a key source of problem for uh, Brazil. Uh, take uh, uh, South Africa, for example. South Africa, their largest trading partner is China. They said a lot of uh, uh, gold, uh, diamond, platinum, etc., to China, and then China is not buying as much. So you can go down the list, and uh, China economic growth slows as a result. All the nations, including, well, the BRIC nations, uh, they are suffering. So in the future, what we want to see is a stronger economic growth in China, and that will automatically affect positively the BRIC nations and the United States for that matter. Well, as you mentioned, India is the bright spot here. Its growth forecast was trimmed slightly by the IMF to 7.4% from 7.5%, still the fastest growing major economy. Why is India the bright spot? What is it doing right? Uh, key is, uh, I think, investments. Uh, India is a very, very heavily regulated economy. There are too many rules and regulations, and it's very difficult to do business in uh, India. And a lot of those regulations have been brought in from the British uh, system. And the new Prime Minister Modi, he came in and said, you know what, I am going to dismantle regulations and then give more freedom to businesses, both domestic and foreign. So we have seen uh, quite a bit of uh, foreign direct investments coming into uh, India, which has been uh, very good, creating more jobs. And also, he has been cutting regulations, red tapes within India. As a result, uh, domestic businesses are doing better. Uh, in addition, India imports uh, a lot of oil. As a matter of fact, uh, they import 80 percent of the crude oil that they use. And obviously, the low price of crude oil, that's been very helpful for India. So I would say cut back regulations and then low price of oil, uh, those two have been very positive for India. Well, the commodity slump has uh, taken a toll on the other countries, has benefited India, though. M many of these countries, Professor, do have dollar-denominated debt. So as the Fed raises rates, which will inevitably strengthen the dollar, how much pressure will they feel, and what impact will that have now? Uh, that is a big issue. As a matter of fact, uh, if you look at developing nations as a group, uh, not only do they have uh, record amounts of foreign uh, debt in general, but also dollar, yen, euro-denominated debt. 
what happened was that they needed money, so what they did was, uh, well, let's borrow cheap, and the interest rates on the euro, the dollar, and the Japanese yen were very low, so they decided to borrow in those currencies, which in hindsight was a mistake. Uh, as uh, their currencies uh, depreciated their debt burden, that debt service burden has really gone up quite a bit. And so uh, they've got lots of problems, but one of the main problems is uh, their high debt load, especially denominated in the foreign currencies. <coughs>